Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of my live tea tasting. I've got an exciting blend for you guys today and I am so thoroughly like hyped to do this one because it is a familiar but not familiar um, type of tea. Now this one, we're continuing to do the collection from uh, Volition. They are based in Chicago by the way. Um, so today's blend is going to be called Red Jade. And it is, I'm really looking forward to it because it's a, uh, hey Snea, welcome. I'm really looking forward to it because uh, it's very, very much like a Keeman. And you guys know how much I, I love Keeman. Now, this is called Red Jade and technically it's a red tea. Um, but it's more classified to be like an oolong into a black tea. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily brew this as a black tea because uh, it looks like it's going to be uh, kind of brittle. So it's going to over, it's it's probably easy to over steep. Uh, let me take a look right here. I just want to make sure that I'm set up correctly. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, I'm having problems once again uh, with my comments. <laughs> so please be patient with me. Uh, as we as we go on because I might not get what you say uh, but anyway so we're gonna take a look at this tea and I am thoroughly excited it smells really really nice uh, so let's take a look at what we have here as a Keeman usually looks it's very string and twiggy like I will use my head as a reference because it's really hard to see in this uh, in this light unless you come up really close. So you can see it just looks like a twisty little string, which means that there's not a whole lot of uh, mass to it. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Uh, there's not a whole lot of um, mass to it uh, in the leaf itself, uh, enough for it to expand and take some abuse. So we'll see after it's after it's steeped, it's just opened up slightly. There's not a whole lot of difference, and this is why we have to treat it very de uh, delicately. Now I almost made the mistake of brewing it at the full 212. Uh, Keeman, no, Keeman is K-E-E-M-U-N, not A-N. Um, now I almost made the mistake of doing it at five minutes for 212 degrees, uh, but that I, I realized my mistake at the last minute and tossed a couple of ice cubes into the kettle uh, before I poured it into the water so that I could drop it uh, to 200 degrees rather than 212. So at least that kind of balanced it out a little bit. Um, so you do want to keep it around 200 uh, between. I would say 180 to 200, um, close to green oolong uh, territory for three minutes. And I think that that was the right call because the smell alone is really nice and smoky, uh, but it doesn't smell bitter, it doesn't smell uh, astringent whatsoever. So let's go ahead and take our first sip and see if I did good. Ooh, that smells really nice. There's kind of like a an earthy malt to it. It's a little bit of nut, a little bit of like mud, I want to say. But mostly it's malt. Oh yeah, smoky. You know that's my favorite pro, uh, flavor profile. So here we go. Hey, Jaren, welcome. Ooh, that is nice. Like there's malt like beer. Um, well, malt like liquor. Yeah, it's not very, it's not very strong. Uh, it's got kind of like I don't know if you've ever had like a malted milkshake before, where all it is they put a little bit of malt uh, in the ice cream and the, and the milk and stuff like that. You get that nice little heavy texture, um, sweetness to it. But this is really, really nice. Like it's it's got it's not heavy, uh, it's not overpowering, but it's still kind of heavy. 
Mm. And there's no astringency whatsoever. So I think I made the right call in underspeeping it uh, because it is very full flavor. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it bold per se, um, but it's really it's really really nice. Mm. It's really smooth too. I'm actually I'm actually not not I don't want to say surprised. Um, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> I'm glad that it's not uh, that it's not overpowering. I'm glad that it's not too strong um, because then that would have mean that I messed up um, and I would have, uh, as I always do, I take full responsibility for the tea that I serve and the tea that I drink uh, myself. So I have to be very careful in the way that uh, I brew these and. On the on the package, uh, I didn't see any. Oh wait, no. Yeah, it does say uh, it, it does say brew at two hundred and twelve, um, at thirty seconds and twenty seconds for no wait at a five minutes deep. So what's this thirty second twenty second? I don't know. Um, it does say to do this five minutes deeps at uh, two hundred and twelve. Um, I did not do that specifically because I don't believe that this can handle it. Um, this, I mean, Keeman tends to be very, um, very delicate and it's easy to, it's easy to mess up. Uh, but if you do it right, you should get uh, a nice malty flavor. Um, sometimes you get good, uh, a good amount of peach. Or rock fruit, kind of a kind of an aftertaste. I'm not picking that up 100%, um, but I might get that after it cools, and that's actually what I'm looking forward to. I mean, either way, this is really delicious. Mmm. Like especially in the fall uh, and winter seasons, where I'm looking for those heavier flavors. Um, this is the kind of tea that I would go for because it's not overpowering. Um, it's good for like a morning, a morning wake up. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's actually, I would describe it as kind of refreshing because um, it's not really kicking the pants kind of wake you up, uh, but it's more of a gentle rising uh, kind of flavor to it. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, maybe I'll do it next time I, uh, I steep this for myself at 212 degrees just to see uh, how much it can handle. But I wouldn't recommend it unless you're experimenting. Um, just based on the scent, on the shape, even, even the color. Like if we, look at, if we look at this, you'll see it doesn't really pick up. But there's like a little bit of green. You can see it's not totally brown black. Um, like it, it looks like it's brown black on the on the uh, on the camera. But there's hints of green um, in my real life <laughs> eyes that don't really show up very well. Um, so in this case, I tend to err on the side of caution. Uh, just to be, you know, just to be safe. I don't want to. I don't want to drink, and I definitely don't want to serve any bad tea to anybody. Hmm. Oh, that's really nice. Like I'm feeling a nice little warmth in my chest. I'm wondering. I mean, because uh, I wouldn't normally uh, sweeten a cumin. Not at all. Like I, I feel like if I were to do that, it would be it would be disrespecting the tea. Uh, that's just my opinion. You, you can drink whatever you want, um, but in my opinion, because like I, I like to have that nice smoky um, that that kind of malt flavor to it. I wouldn't touch this and, and lose any of that. Mmm. Yeah, so I think I think that brewing it at 200 degrees uh, for three minutes was just the perfect method. 
<clears throat> Ooh, I'm keeping, I have like a nice little, <laughs> I have a nice little warmth in my belly right now. And, and I mean, it's really cold outside, so it's really, it's coming in handy. Uh, I'm going to have to switch my, my teas in my office because I don't have a whole lot of black teas right now. I have a few chais. Um, I have a few... I have a, I have like a few white teas, um, which is like more of a spring kind of flavor to it. Um, I'm, I'm, I really think like now is the season because, okay, uh, you, you guys already know my favorite tea season is fall and winter because like those heavy, heavy flavors just go well uh, in the environment. Uh, but cream is good. I mean, I wouldn't. But like I said, that's just that's just me. Um, I don't think that it's strong enough to require cream. Um, I would reserve that for more of the breakfast teas uh, and like Earl Grey. I like I like a heavy a heavy smoky Earl Grey with cream uh, and sugar. Like I, I I wouldn't really eat I, I wouldn't really drink it any other way. Um, the only exception that I would make without the cream and sugar was uh, Tilula's Smoking Gun. Oh, that's my favorite. Because it's got a heavy presence of Lapsang Souchong in it. And it drowns out a lot of the shampoo taste uh, that I get from the uh, from Earl Grey generally. But it's, it's, it's like... I, I, I would drink it with cream and sugar. Um... Because it's it's not terrible. It just needs to be fixed, <laughs> in my opinion. Hmm. I also want to comment. There's no real mouthfeel on this. Um, as I drink, it's just really it's really kind of mellow. Uh, it's very thin, very liquidy, there's no texture, there's no, um, there's, there's no, like, strong weight on it, uh, but there is, like, it's, it does burn slowly, so the flavor is, the, the flavor is sticking around for quite some time, um, which, of course, I, I thoroughly enjoy because, as I talk and as I, I work at my computer, uh, I can drink and then just let the, the flavor do the work, you know? Uh, and it, it inspires me. It inspires me to write and it, it inspires my mood. Uh, and it gets me, it, it gets me going in, in one way or another. Hmm. And as it cools down, as it cools down, it's starting to get pretty sweet. I'm starting to pick up a little bit of the notes of, uh, of peach that I was talking about before. Um, a little bit, surprisingly, like a little bit of acorn, which I don't know, I don't know like how many people know what acorn tastes like. Um... But there are like like pine needle tea and and uh, acorn has that scent to it that kind of like fresh wood earth, um, but a lightness to it. Like that's what I'm getting from here. I'm getting like a little bit of a pine cone. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that they do make uh, pine cone tea. I think it, I know that they make pine needle. I don't know if they make pine cone. I think I've heard of it somewhere, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like I, I would love to try it out. I'll have to like check on Amazon sometime, <laughs> but not sometime too soon because I have so much tea to get through. Um, it's 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 insane. <laughs> like I'm still. I don't know if you guys remember. I did the uh, the puar. Uh, the, the, the poor that was aged from 20, what, 2006, I want to say, or 2008, one of the two, and I still haven't finished it. I'm still working on the tea, 
Um, and it take, it's, it's taking a while to get through. Uh, but I drink it whenever I can. I'm about halfway through the brick. And I love it. You know, that's, that's one thing that I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to drink on a regular basis. But, like, the season for that one is over. So it's time to move over. More something like this. Oh. Mm. So far, between this one and the raw poir that I had two weeks ago uh, from Volition, I like this one better. Like, not to say that the poir was bad. It was really good. But it's just, this is, this one is, is, is heavier in its form, um, and it's more, to me, it's, it's more matching the flavor profile that I prefer. And as you can see, like, I'm, I'm sipping this again and, like, like, practically repeatedly because I'm enjoying it. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I talk a lot in between a tea that I'm not too impressed with, so that I can like take my time in between uh, and not finish it, but this is definitely going to be finished by the, uh, probably by the end of the stream. Unless I actively like slow down and <laughs> just go at my own pace uh, rather than drinking like I'm, like I'm a maniac, <laughs> which I tend to do that when I love a good tea. Um, but I have to, you know, like this is going to be one of those that I have to restrain a little bit so that it, uh, it lasts. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad that it only comes in a little canister this big. Um, I, I, I gotta see if they have anything bigger, because, uh, this one I actually bought at a flower shop that one of my friends worked at, and, uh, they are friends with the owner, so I kind of had a a little uh, a little assistance <laughs> moving towards this pack. Uh, but I would definitely go back because this is it's a really nice, refreshing blend. I mean, I, I keep calling it blend. It's a nice, ref refreshing leaf. And this is all single origin, by the way. It all comes from the same place. Uh, it's all the same leaf inside. There's no additives. There's no um, extra ingredients. This is all just one leaf, and it, it's it's fantastic. Like I'm not gonna lie, this is this is one of my one of my favorite teas that I've had within the past few months um, that I'm able to thoroughly enjoy. I can't think of anything bad to say about it. But I'm really enjoying, like, just the feeling of it. Like, I, I'm still warm in my chest, and I'm warm in my stomach. And this is the kind of feeling that I look for whenever I, um, whenever I drink a tea, because it feels, it, it's an all-around sensation kind of a, kind of experience. Um, I once read, uh, it, it was... I don't know if you call it like a thesis, or hey pops, welcome. Uh, I, I I guess I, a, a report, a paper, or something like that. Uh, I once read where tea is actually stimulates all five senses, and you don't really think about it until you do. You know, I mean, like we have sight. We look at the color. We look at the the, well, the liquor. We look at the the, the leaf. And we see the beauty of that, how it should be prepared. That's what led me to do it at 200 degrees for three minutes rather than 212 for five. You know, something like that, it stimulates the senses. Then there is the sense of smell. You, you put it up to your, your nose, inhale it, and you get that nice, refreshing aroma. Um works for the liqueur, the dry leaf, and the wet leaf. All three of them differ in some way or another. Then you have, of course, taste. You sip the tea, uh, and then you decipher what it is you, you're tasting. There's also touch, there's texture, there's mouthfeel. 
You have it in your, you feel the warmth of the cup in your hand. Now you feel the texture of the tea leaf in your fingers. It's very tactile. And that was something that, that um, I didn't realize uh, was a thing. Uh, but also hearing. You know, you, you have to listen to the, uh, the kettle. As it's done, you slurp. You hear how, uh, how loud you slurp. And that helps you taste uh, the tea, whether or not you have to slurp again. Um, there's also, when you crunch the leaf, you hear it snap. There's all these different uh, senses. And so, all these, all these uh, contributions to your experience sum up your full, uh, your full experience whether you realize it or not. So it causes you to actually think about the things that you're, that you're experiencing as you go. <coughs> and I try to be mindful of all of this as I, uh, as I drink. Mm. So, that being said, I'm going to open up the floor to questions and comments, anything you want to talk about. Now is the time. Um, I'm going to answer Teresa's question as I always do first thing. What would I pair this with? Um, because this is a very malty kind of tea, it's, it's kind of earthy, it's kind of semi-sweet. So I would probably... This is, this is going to be tough. This, like, I love Keeman by itself. Um, so it's very hard for me to, to pair it most times. Uh, but I think it would go well with like a nice roasted chicken. Something that's semi-strong, semi-smoky, um, but not overpowering. Fish, yeah. Like a smoked salmon would really go well with this. Um, I don't know, like, it's, I, I, I don't know if I can do anything as a dessert tea. Uh, because it's not very sweet. I can't really think of anything that would, uh, that would complement it very well. I wouldn't go too sweet. Maybe something like a Stroopwafel. You know, something that's, uh, caramel. Uh, a caramel Stroopwafel. That's the one that I was thinking about specifically. Or maybe a, a bitter chocolate. Like a dark chocolate something that's nice and, uh, and, and smoky. Um, what else? I can't really, I can't really think of anything that like, really stands out. Maybe roasted pork. I think pork would go well with this. I don't know if I'd do like a beef or a steak because anything might, um, might throw it off. But it's still it's it's still pretty good, you know. I mean, I can't really think of anything that would mess this up, you know. Like I would go with my first instinct and not eat anything with it, uh, but that's just me. Mm. Ooh, well, that's really nice, and I'm still feeling that warmth right in my chest. It feels just going down and, and giving me like a really, a really nice feeling. I'm feeling kind of, I'm, I'm feeling kind of happy. You know, that's something that uh, I don't really say very often. Um, I mean, yeah, tea makes me happy, but like the idea of tea versus drinking it and feeling happy are two different things, you know? Um... To me, happiness is an actual effect from drinking uh, certain teas, and this one does just that. It make it's making me happy right this minute. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful. You know, it's a good. It, this is a really good blend. Oh, and forgot. See, it's really clear. <laughs> I almost forgot. Got to do the Thomas taste. Got to do the Thomas taste. Okay, here we go. Now that it's cooled off. I'm probably going to get more flavor out of it from the, from the Thomas taste, but we'll see. Ooh. 
That's surprising. I'm picking up kind of like a bit of a vanilla pudding behind it. Like I'm still getting like the malt, the um, the malt, the the peach, but there's like a little bit of vanilla pudding in there. Uh, I was I was not surprised. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, and, you know, like, like, like I, I think that that's more of an effect of the peach and the malt together. Um, it just doesn't have that, I guess, like, the breath out kind of reminds me of vanilla pudding. I don't know. It's, it's, it's surprising, but it's really good. I was not expecting that at all. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. All right, I'm going to open up the floor once more. Oh, excuse me, questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, now's the time. Battling the hiccups. <laughs> I lost. Mm. Okay, there we go. Interesting tea. Oh, it absolutely is. Like, I, I'm actually going to go look for more of this because um, I'm always on the search for something new that I could... Uh, I can enjoy. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. This has been an extraordinary experience. Uh, as usual, I will post the link in the uh, in the description if. Oh, I cut myself. <laughs> uh, if there is a link, which I'm sure there is, uh, I will send it in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, but in the meantime, have a great night. A wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.